Welcome back, my friends of the show that never ends. Glad you could attend. I'm here to give you your daily or yearly dose of iron, if you will, and that's in the form of Iron Man 3. Yes, Robert Downey Jr. returns as Tony Stark, only we see a kind of flawed Tony Stark again because he's dealing with uh, these inner demons that have developed after the events of the Avengers, and it's affected him innerly, and he's really having some conflict going on there. And while he's dealing with these inner demons and this conflict, he's dealing outwardly with his relationship with Pepper Potts, played by Gwyneth Paltrow again, and dealing also with this terrorist who wants to kill him in, that is called The Mandarin, played by Ben Kingsley. Iron Man 3, one of the most anticipated films of the summer blockbuster season, and it happens to be the film that kicks off this summer blockbuster season, and what a way to kick it off, folks. Iron Man 3 was enjoyable for a number of reasons. For one, it was a drastic improvement, I think, over Iron Man 2. Iron Man was a great film. Then Iron Man 2, while it was a good, fun, popcorny flick, it didn't quite have the depth of character, I think, or the exploration character that Iron Man 1 did. Uh, you know, it was just a little bit more of a basic story. Uh, you know, and I'm sure some will argue with me, but I, I, the way I felt, it just wasn't quite like Iron Man 1, but still an entertaining film. Now, Iron Man 3, we're back. Tony Stark's got flaws in him, and it's definitely got more depth of character than uh, Iron Man 2. So, you know, props there for Iron Man 3 for improving on that. But it makes sense, because Shane Black, who directed Iron Man 3 and also wrote this, is used to writing flawed heroes. He did that with Riggs from the Lethal Weapon series, he, which he wrote. So he can handle flawed heroes very well, and he handles the flawed Tony Stark uh, really well in uh, Iron Man 3. Then you've got Gwyneth Paltrow and Don Achield. Uh, returning, and, and I, I love them. Uh, they do great compliment to Tony Stark. Love their roles. Always great to see those characters come back. And we've got a few new additions in here. We've got Ben Kingsley, as I mentioned, as the Mandarin, playing it to the hilt. Uh, just, I loved his character. It's a little bit unexpected of how much I enjoyed him on screen. But it's Ben Kingsley, so, you know, he does really well in the roles he's given. I, you know, we can forgive him for doing uh, Blood Rain. We won't really acknowledge that. But in Iron Man 3, fantastic as the Mandarin. And then we've also got Guy Pearson here as kind of a, uh, you know, a... a uh, enemy of Tony Stark as well in the form of his Aldrich Killian who's this kind of rich smart guy who is trying to appeal to Pepper Potts and uh, I loved his character as well definitely he played that to the hilt and uh, it just was fun to watch and, and Iron Man 3 in general is fun to watch lots of great special effects in here things they do with the suit but that's not really the focus to focus more is story and character and you've got a lot more depth of both in this than you did in Iron Man 2. Uh, what I will say too is there's a couple of scenes in here uh, near the middle of the film where uh, Tony Stark ends up meeting up with this kid loved the scenes and the way those were written. Uh, you, you'll know when I see it. I, I just love the chemistry between uh, you know Robert Downey Jr. and the kid actor they had. I, I forget his name offhand. I apologize. But really loved those scenes quite a bit. The way they were just written and directed. Uh, you know, this film is directed very well. You get to see a lot more action. It's not a lot of close-up shaky cam, so props there to Shane Black as well. Though, you know, he's really only directed a couple of films. Iron Man 3. He also did Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Now, don't confuse that Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which also had Robert Downey Jr. in it, with the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang that Paul Bettany, who plays the voice of uh, Jarvis was in completely different movies, same title, that's Hollywood for you. Folks, Iron Man 3, though it does have some plot holes and some fanboys may not like the liberties they've taken with the characters, I thought was a very enjoyable comic book film and definitely a great way to kick off the summer blockbuster season. Four stubs for me for Iron Man 3. Definitely worth it. Uh, not sure if you have to see it in the 3 Distraction. Didn't really add too much to it. But again, 2, the 3 Distraction was not actually a distraction in this case. So 2D or 3D, it's just as enjoyable. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Now remember, uh, this week we've got an episode of The Spoiler Room being recorded live on this channel Thursday, uh, May 9th at 9.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Please tune in and watch a group of us uh, podcast and reviewers and movie watchers get together in The Spoiler Room and talk this week about comic book films. Go figure. Uh, so definitely tune in at that. Hope to see you there. And until next time, folks, keep that ticket stuff.